the digital revolution so far. Here's a chart where we can explain a little bit about uh, where we've come. So on a timeline, we're talking from about the mid 1980s. Could be said that the digital revolution of technology really got underway and we'll map a whole bunch of trends against this timeline. First of all, the World Wide Web. The very early version, what we call 1.0, that we all got access to if you were around in the mid-90s. The Web version 2.0, where a whole bunch of more social type tools and interactivity came into the internet. About the mid noughties as we say, and then web version 3.0 um, with even more interactivity coming sometime around 2015. I'd like to map different networks, the history of networks. Before the 1980s, we really only had computers that were networked from big mainframe computers to other big mainframe computers. Some universities and militaries, basically that was it if you wanted to get the benefits of network computers. From the mid-90s, um, we were able to connect individual PCs out to the World Wide Web. That was a, a big jump. A little bit later, we were able to do P2P, which is peer-to-peer. -peer. So not just connecting one PC out to the internet, but connecting PCs to PCs for more direct sharing. Um, Wi-Fi meant we could do all that except wirelessly in a much more mobile way. Social networking arose sort of from the mid noughties onwards, that sort of 2000s onwards, and um, that I guess is leveraging of the connections between computers to not just send computer data but actually for social means for communicating, sharing, those kind of things. And as we move towards where we are currently, a really um, big thing that's happening is mobile social. So that's where those social networks, using all those prior connections, have been built up and we can now do that pretty much anywhere from our mobile devices. And um, of course off in the future is always a little bit unclear but ultimately artificial intelligence uh, will come into play in networks. The cloud is um, where basically the zone that we've entered now where most data and services are moving into this always online and accessible and that's what we call cloud or cloud computing. Okay, as far as desktop computers that um, from the mid 80s onwards what we really call the PC, the personal computer, they um, have been dropping off in, in sales and there was that period in the sort of two, about, about 2005 where firstly laptop sales, notebook sales became more than desktop computer sales and of course more recently We've had mobile devices um, starting to massively outsell uh, even laptops and notebooks. So, in the history of mobile computing, back in the mid 1980s, we really only had 1G, very, very slow um, cell phone connections. Uh, that has, of course, improved over time with uh, 2G, 3G, which really for the first time brought um, fairly decent wireless internet access speeds and of course now we um, have 4G which is uh, pretty much as good as many broadband, fixed broadband lines and cable internet. You can also see the history of the more mobile computers there from uh, the early laptops, early personal digital assistants like the Palm PDA and the first smartphones that combined a PDA with the phone functionality. Uh, Blackberry was a very big player in the early space with some of their services and of course Netbooks was like the super mobile laptop and um, since then the full touch screen kind of computing that came in first uh, really in a mass way with the iPhone and um, iPad in the tablet zone. As we move you know sort of through our, our all the events of the cloud and um, into the future we're really talking about um, firstly maybe wearable technology where we wear different bits of technology on our bodies moving to where it's actually implanted. Firstly probably that's coming already in many medical uses um, but ultimately it's possible that our computers won't just be in our pocket but um, different things potentially be implanted and that's really a time of ubiquitous computing that's talked about where computers and technology being miniaturized 
to the point where they can just be basically painted onto your wall and um, various other surfaces and just the devices that we carry, the ones that are implanted, all constantly communicating with each other is this idea of ubiquitous computing. Now, we can divide this phase into two, just um, to clarify it a bit more. There's um, phase one, really where computing got the capability to go mobile. Things have been miniaturized enough that we could create dedicated standalone devices like PDAs or MP3 players. Um, they were pretty small and um, very mobile, but we could mostly undo one thing. Um, then the phase two was really where uh, these kind of devices technology had improved so they could do more than just one thing. So we added cameras and phones and PDAs all got combined into devices. Add that to the much improved connectivity and um, that was really a big step in the digital revolution. It's also interesting to map this against what we might call learner centeredness. So what does this mean for learning and for the learner? So the early kind of technologies from around those mid 90s actually having the internet and uh, laptops, those kind of technologies um, around the Web 1.0 era meant that we could do e-learning. So a lot of learning tasks, but do them by sharing over the internet. A little bit later, again, with the more advances in mobile technology, meant that mobile learning could start to succeed e-learning as that sort of primary uh, technological assisted form of learning where you could do all that kind of online collaboration, sharing, learning, etc. but in a super mobile way, anywhere where you had your device. Connectivism was a theory of learning which really came into its own following that. Uh, it basically talked about the advantages for learning when everybody is connected. PLEs and PLNs have become super important. So that's your personal learning environment or your personal learning network. Now that you've got all these tools and we're connected, uh, no, no longer does the teacher just have to be on their own in a school, um, in their field. They have a whole, I guess, world of colleagues that they can be in constant touch with, learning from and sharing back to. Where's this all really going? Uh, well, already we're seeing um, in Queensland something that's called eKindy that's just being launched, which is a totally online uh, kindergarten course. And um, you know, there's a, been a massive increase in online university courses, and um, that's actually filtering down even to what we might start be starting to call virtual primary schools, and where students are not having to be face to face all the time be very interesting to see how that develops. So that's just a little overview of the digital revolution so far to give a big picture of where we've come from, what we've moved through and where we're up to at the moment.